Hey y'all, this is for the TAs. I uh, just kind of wanted to show you a couple of things about Zoom that Connor and Ben and I discovered when we were working together on it last night. Um, some tricks about how you use it. Uh, first of all, um, they did, uh, when you're hosting a, um, a Zoom chat, including when you're, when you're coming in as a TA during lecture, you're going to need to host it um, by clicking the link in D2L. If you just click the link that's here on the website, then you join it as an ordinary student. Um, so we can go to Zoom here. You can see that I've cleaned up the Zoom meetings here. All right, so let's say that we're going into the office hours meeting. Um, actually, there is a start button down here, but I didn't mean to click that. All right, let's click start. <clears throat> so this will launch. Now, um, one of the things that's gonna be really important um, is that we have multiple hosts. And so whoever's the primary host, um, I should say that um, Zoom distinguishes between the single ordinary host, the full host, and any number of co-hosts. So if you guys log in using D2L, then you should show up as a co-host if you come in second. Uh, I did hear from Connor that there might be some a little bit of weirdness here. Like if you click this button and it doesn't launch within this browser, if it launches within a different browser, there might be some confusion. But um, if you, uh, what Connor discovered was that if he if he logged in using a browser that was logged into D2L, then he automatically got assigned to the right username and uh, then was listed as a co-host on the meeting. Um, so uh, when you're here in the, in the meeting, um, there are some things you can do here. Uh, you can do some basic controls about uh, what people can do. Unfortunately, what I'm noticing here is that because there's not multiple people here logged in at the same time, I'm not seeing the more button. What you will see is that there's a, normally there's a more button here um, that allows you to do a lot of user control. So you can promote a user to be a host, for instance. So if one of the TAs comes in and forgets to log in properly, you can upload or you can upgrade them to a host or a co-host. Um, you, someone who's a the host can delegate that primary responsibility to somebody else, uh, stuff like that. Um, so that's the key thing I want you to be looking at here is exploring over here what the various options are, things you can do. Generally, what we found here is that if you log in properly, then you will become a host or a co-host uh, immediately. If you come in, even if you theoretically have authorization, if you lose your host privileges, you can't give them back to yourself. So you have to ask one of the other hosts to promote you. Um, but let's see here. We wanna make sure we don't accidentally have a, a, a student become the host. Um, all right, I think that might be all the extra details that we need to talk about. So I hope this was useful and I will see you, well, I'll see you online pretty soon.